What's up guys? Uh, Josh here to give uh, a little more explanation on more things rotary. Um, seems that a lot of people have taken a liking to uh, my Weber Rotary Basics, which is pretty much just the basic tuning start point of a Weber for a uh, for rotary engine. So what I'm going to talk about today is uh, thermostats. So clearly I have a thermostat for a 12A right here and I'm just going to go through the different things and what type of thermostat you need for a rotary. So obviously it's got a rubber seal around it. You don't necessarily have to have that. Um, I actually don't run one on my car currently. I just use a red RTV gasket around it. It doesn't leak. don't have any problems with it. Um, so as you can see, there's this little nipple thing right here. When you go to put this in to your water pump housing, that needs to be the topmost thing that you put, or the highest point in the uh, in the housing. So it needs so so if you were looking down onto it, you would put it right down onto it. Uh, also, when you go to buy a thermostat housing at O'Reilly's or wherever, you need to make sure that it looks like this. It has to have this back plunger on it. So what this back plunger does is it allows the coolant to circulate through the motor itself until until it reaches a certain temperature. Then the uh, actual thermostat housing will open up and allow coolant to flow to the radiator, which on this one is at 82 degrees Celsius or 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Most thermostats you can read it down in the uh, in the port. You actually can't see it maybe there a little bit. Anyways, so make sure that it has the plunger on the back of it. If it doesn't and it's just a normal thermostat then it's just going to continuously circulate coolant through the motor, never really pushing it through the radiator like it should and blocking that port off, allowing for the motor to actually properly be cooled, causing overheating. Now a lot of thing one thing that a lot of people like to do for for uh, better cooling applications or uh, racing applications is they will take a therm a normal thermostat housing like this and cut out all of the uh, inner portion of it and leave the actual block drilled out and open so that the flow of the uh, so the flow is direct. If you do that you need to come up with some way to plunge off that hole on the bottom of the thermostat. If you don't, once again it's going to lead to overheating issues even though it's free flowing as everything you're still going to have problems with it recirculating in the block and not getting pushed through the radiator. Another thing is you never really want to run a uh, water pump that's designed for street use without a thermostat. You can do it if you run a reduced sized um, pulley on the water pump, but you're going to run into the problems of the car overheating sitting in traffic. So this is pretty much race use only would you ever not run a thermostat and uh, and reduce the size of the pulley. Now you can run a thermostat and leave the, pu the pulley the same size and once again cut the center out and the reason why you need to leave the uh, thermostat in there and have the center cut out is because the pump will cavitate and what cavitation means is it's pumping faster than the fluid is able to move through the pumping system so that you create these little air bubbles and they pop and they and it, if you actually ever hear a system that has cavitation going through it you can actually hear the pinging down in the pump and it destroys pumps it also makes the pump not work efficiently so it's pumping faster than the water is able to flow eventually leading to overheating 
So I just wanted to give you a little rundown of why you need proper thermostats. Um, this is just a Rock Auto special. Um, I always buy, I don't ever buy the cheapest, I'll, I don't ever buy the most expensive, but I always buy failsafe. So what failsafe means in this situation is, okay, the car is starting to run warm and the thermostat is wide open. Well, it goes it goes an extra limit and it actually will at a certain temperature lock the thermostat open so that it physically will never shut again. Well, if that happens and your car comes back down from temperature, then you have to replace this thermostat if you want it to ever work again because once it's locked, it's it's pretty much a throw it in the trash part. But anyways, guys, just wanted to give, you know, my two cents on something simple and figured I would do more rotary-related uh, facts. Until next time, happy brapping.